Today's episode is brought to you by the nonprofit organization Angel to Angel. Angel to Angel provides services to accommodate the needs of the underserved communities in DFW and surrounding areas. To donate, cash out dollar sign Angel to Angel Org. For more information, go to Angel to Angel's website www.angel2angelhelp.org. Conversations, Conversations with, with S.D. Booker. Booker. Welcome to Conversations with S.D. Booker by way of a toast to the men with S.D. Booker. Today we got a special guest and this man is not only special, he is important to the community mm-hmm. and uh, to, to me, myself and to the world. We, uh, we have an entrepreneur, we have an advocate for the youth and we also have the founder of Destination Known, Mr. Leon Theodore. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate you. Yo. Thank you for that. Uh, you know, I, you know me. I don't really do all of the uh, all of that, but you know, mm-hmm. sir, I, I love our kids, man. So thank you for having for having me here. And I want to be thank you for what you do, man, because you 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 got you got everything these kids need. So thank you for what you do. Man, man, I, I thank you for that. I, I appreciate you. Actually, man, sometimes I, I think I'm not doing enough. Uh, when I look at <laughs> when I look at what you're doing in a meeting, you and I just came off of, uh, and I'm listening to some of these educators, and I'm not an educator by profession, uh, but by spirit I am. And uh, I'm like, man, th- there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work being done. And uh, sometimes it seems like an uphill battle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and you said something that was key and that's important. It's a lot of work being done. And that's the thing that uh, like part of what I'm trying to do is bring people together. That's that's the gift I got of bringing people together. And, you know, it, like you said, if you if you don't understand that there's people around you doing some of the things that you think need to be done or doing some of the things that that you do, mm-hmm. you get disheartened man and if you don't find out who you can link up with man you'll be out there doing some crazy stuff because you won't even you know you will think and you'll give up so yeah i get you man it's all about connecting people and it's all about making sure that um we understand that there's more than just us doing the work so yeah that's a big thing man right yeah i mean speaking of linking up uh just to share something with the people how we linked up actually was through uh I guess you would say uh, one of our partners, my friend, our friend, our partner, uh, Demetrius Glenn. Yes. And so yeah. uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you how how God works or the universe works. Um, now you can say God. I'm 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 here, but I don't I don't do that universe thing. <laughs> okay. So so the, the way it works, man, is just so so amazing. I went to school with Demetrius, but. I'm a year or two older than Demetrius. So we didn't, <clears throat> we didn't hang out. <clears throat> I was more so uh, friends with uh, his, his brother, uh, uh, his half brother. Uh, and uh, we were teammates, but uh, Demetrius knew of me. I mean, me being upperclassman and, and playing ball. Uh, fast forward, man, 20 some odd years later, I'm doing a, uh, I'm writing a book, my second book, Palmer Christie, and I'm interviewing 13, actually at the time, 12 women I'm interviewing. It's going to be a real life fiction. So I'm interviewing uh, 12 women uh, to get their, their stories, their life stories. And man, these are some, some, uh, some beautiful stories, man. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm posting uh, uh, recordings or clippings, photo clippings of these interviews on Facebook. So I got an old classmate that reaches out to me and say, hey, you need to interview our old classmate, uh, Guinevere. And I'm like, well, really, you know, I got my 12 women. That's, that's all I wanted. And uh, she's like, no, really, she got a story. You need to talk to her. And uh, so I said, well, I'll call her. So we spoke. And uh, <clears throat> she was suffering from cancer, actually dying from cancer. Mm-hmm. And uh, we spoke. I said, well, yeah, I, I definitely need to add you to this book. That was my 13th woman. And uh she had, she ended up being the lead character in this book I'm writing, man. <laughs> she, <laughs> right, right. And so it's a three book series, and she's in every every book. But um, 
I didn't know her and Demetrius were close. And uh, he had been uh, going uh, with her to treatments and, and along with this process of dealing with cancer for a few years. And uh, from there, me and Demetrius linked up and, and start building a rapport. And uh, that brought me to you. Uh, I think he mentioned me to you. I wrote a book. And you like, man, we, we need to connect with this brother then for what I got going on with Destination Known. And here we are, man. And yeah, <laughs> that's, that's wild. That, that, it, yeah, it's not wild. It's, it's, it's God, bro. But you know, God do wild stuff. So, you know, right. that's what he known for. And it's like, you know, I was thinking, you know, I met Demetrius like six years ago. And the reason I do what I do is because like my history, right? I, I come from, I'm one of them bad kids, right? And I, I, I don't, it, it wasn't no, it was a lot of things I was involved in what caused it, but you know, I was a, a wild kid, right. but I, I met him at the gym working out and was getting ready to flip on somebody back then. <laughs> <laughs> they sent Demetrius over to kind of calm all that down. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, we got to talking about what I do and what he does. And then that just kind of like blossomed the whole thing. And then like when he mentioned you, like I said, I'm all about connecting people, man. And I I, I, I like to see, I, I like to see the things that like what our kids need. And that's what it was. Just hearing when he told me about you, I ain't care nothing about, you know, it mm. was just yeah, that fits, right? Wow. And, and 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 yeah, because you know it's a lot of us out there that don't understand a lot of kids, a lot of us in general that don't understand that it just takes. All you got to do is do it, right? right? And if you first. see somebody doing it, then again, all you need is somebody to show you that it can be done, and that's what we're trying to do, man. But yeah, I, I'm blessed to have you in the in the camp with us, man, because yeah, that quiet calm is what was necessary, yo. Oh man, thank you, thank you for the invite. Yeah. But the name, uh, the organization, the nonprofit organization, the name of it, Destination Known. Man, that name is so powerful. Uh, and I tell people, I say it in a different way. I say, you have to see the end. And so that's what that name says. Uh, the destination is known, you see the end. And that's what we got to understand as a, uh, people, but particularly here, youth, man, you got to see the end, your end game, where you want your life to be, where you want it to go, how you want to live, uh, the type of life you want to live, you have to see the end game. And yes. I don't think we're doing that, uh, especially no. in our youth, we're not doing that. We're, uh, we're just going with the flow, whatever life throws our yes. way. And uh, we, we we can't even see the end. You know, I know no. when I was young, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to live past you know, 25. You know, I'm serious. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be 21, yo. So, yeah, yeah. I didn't think I was going to make it to 21. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, how did we get to this point where Destination Known was birthed? So, uh, yeah, but that's, it, it was, again, like I said, I was one of those kids coming home. 20 years ago, I was sitting in a cell and um, I, I, I was sitting there trying to make a decision on whether I was going to continue hustling or I was going to try something different. And uh, I asked the homeboy that me and him, we we did our thing together. And uh, he was like, what you going to do? And I, and I was just sitting there looking, man. And it was like, everybody I know sitting right up in here with me. So I know what that's going to be. So I can't, I, I made a decision. Changed, the, changed my pod back then. Back, they still had things back then, like services and stuff. Mm. But it was the fact that I knew I wanted to do something different, right? So that was the part of the destination was let's, let's just, I, I, you know that's not what you do not build for this, that you know where you want to be. So that I, it was just in my mind's eye. So fast forward, I got my, um, I started another nonprofit um in florida to help certain people um and then i went to, and it that kind of like fueled everything that i knew i wanted to what i wanted to do so then i went to school and got started um getting my social work degree um that was back in 2015 and um i came to texas 
and started school. And it was just understanding that, like you said, as a youth, most of, most of us, most, not even youth, most of, most people just flow along with life. We don't have an idea. And until you, like you said, until you see that destination, then you can't form a plan, right? So if you say, you say, okay, I want to be a pilot. You at least know you got to go to flight school. You got to do blah, blah, blah. You got to see all of that. But if you really pick something that's and see where you got to go, you can actually make a plan. You can actually find people. Like I said, it's important to have that, to know that this is where I want to go. This is how I need to get there. You can change the plan, but you can at least make, make a plan. And at the time when I was in school, I was working with um, uh, homeless with the homeless population or unhoused is what we call them now. And uh, I, I was just, it was deep to me that, you know, when you're unhoused, cause I experienced that as well a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have, it's no hope for nothing, right? Like right. it's just, so it was, it was starting off with how just showing people how they can make a change. All it takes is some hard work, a plan, and more hard work, and it leads to success. And if you have an open mind, you can do that. And that's where it started off. So, and when I was thinking about kids, you know, doing the research and all of that, the biggest thing that leads our kids out of uh, education is the fact that they don't know what they want to do, right? It's disengagement from class. So uh, that's what I started creating a program. Um, like I said, the first thing we talk about in the first class is, if I told you it was a million dollars, you know, the first thing you're going to ask me is where is it, mm -hmm. right? And if I just tell you over there, this a, over there is a big space, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's like you need to find your destination. And it, But if I lay out a path where I tell you to go down to the tree, take a right, blah, 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 I can actually put you where it is. And that's what Destination Known started off as. And from there, it grew to, again, understanding that it's a support thing, it's a village thing, is the fact that if I connect, if I bring all these people into a, a space where if a kid thinks that writing is impossible, they have that in their heart, but they don't they don't ever see that, right. it's, here's somebody that has that. There's somebody that has a business head, there's somebody for women, there's, and that's all they need, man. So that's what Destination Known is about, is actually helping kids to recognize that What's inside of them, the dream that they have inside of them, it's not crazy, it's not invaluable, it's valid, and it's always somebody that's done what you think, they've already done it, and they can show you how to do it. So it's very rare that there's something new under the sun. Right, right. Right, so, right. Yeah. I mean, that, that's so true. I remember as a youngin, um, early as I can remember, man, uh, maybe five or six, I always had a passion for writing. Uh, I always like storytelling and uh, movies that had great stories. <laughs> and so uh, my church, I think, well, I don't think, I know they recognize that gift. Uh, so I would create my own uh, speeches, you know. Uh, yeah, everybody else had a speech given to them. But even yeah. as a young kid, I would write my own speech uh, for any program we had. And uh, that was great, but I can't remember anyone in my family or even at church uh, specifically saying, you could be a writer, you could be an author, um, this is your gift. I was just doing it because I enjoyed it and I was good at it, yeah. but I never saw that as a destination, as an ending. Um, and then when I got older, I still had the fire in me, but I was like, man, I, I, I can't make any money off of this. And then I had kids, was married. So you got to get in the workforce <laughs> and make some bread. <laughs> and, you know, and, uh, and and it wasn't until, you know, I hit this rocky point a few years ago where I had to release and I started writing. And, you know, that's where I got a toast to the men. That's where that was birthed from. But how are we going to tell these kids this is your gift. You're good at this or, or recognize it or ask the kids, what are you good at? What are you passionate about? I don't think that's done in the home, 
because a lot of times you got a single parent, they're hustling and bustling. They don't even have the time to really sit with the kids and learn the child. And then yes. school, that's, that's a circus too. It's not, that's not the environment. It's not, it's not built for that in education. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, well, my biggest thing is, I don't call it education. It's, it's inoculation. I mean, you know, we, we are indoctrinating kids into um, a system that is, it's not built for learning. It's not built for education. Education requires that you fail. It requires that you have support. It requires that you gain concepts. We don't teach concepts. We teach uh, regurgitation of information, right? And that's, we, we, we basically are indoctrinating kids into being sheep, right? So that just follow what I say and everything will be, well, now we know where that ends up. Right. But um, the real thing is the fact that how you bring a child to see what's valid in them is that you listen, right? And again, in, 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 if you're not at home, when we talk about the home, because education is a community uh, thing. If we're talking about the home and you don't have that access, then where do we bring, where do we make space for the village to come in and do that, right? right. If we're talking about in school, they need to have time to do that. Mm -hmm. And nothing is crazy. Nothing, no idea is crazy. What's crazy is that, I have this idea, but nobody's showing me the steps to get there, right? Like, again, it's a million dollars over there. Well, teach where is the man? Tell me where the million dollars is. Can I use the million dollars? I sure can. But if you don't tell, if you just say it's over there, over there is big, man. And we're not helping kids actualize and realize their dreams. And that's what Destination Known, the program itself, and that's what the whole organization is about. Right. All I need you to do is think. Just, just look inside yourself and say what, what it is that you really want to do. It's not crazy. It's not ridiculous. It's not too far-fetched. And then we'll sit down and help you figure that out, right? And that's what I think we're missing. It's not, it's, it's not the kids. It's not the parents. It, it's the system that that they're operating in. And I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a tall order right. uh, that we're trying to fix, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, like you said, you had to go get bread. So yeah. how, do, how, do I, how do you teach a kid how to go get, get paid, right? And make the sacrifice of that I have to do a job because everybody don't get, you know, everybody don't get to do their dream thing just as a whole. You might have to work and still take steps to make your dream happen. And that's what we're not teaching kids. It's not about the money, man. It's about you having some peace and having like a desire to do something. Cause as you well know, this, this world will eat you up, man. That workforce will eat you up. It will. And it you will. won't even be happy. Yeah. yeah. You're right, you're right. You know, and you mentioned something important, um, the system. And sometimes I, I'm str I struggle with trying to decide which one do we fix first or work on first, the system or the family? Because I know uh, a lot of my problems, my root pop problems uh, were uh, because the family structure was broken in my home. Mm -hmm. You know, no father, uh, no, no sound father figure. Um, I know that, that was the root causes of a lot of my problems. And, uh, that was a cause, the root cause of me, uh, impregnating a, a woman early, getting married early, uh, because of that broken family structure. Um, so even if, let's say we fix the system, are we really fixing the community if the family's not fixed though? No, it, it's um, and you know people again, and I and I'm gonna have to go back to I'm gonna always refer back to destination known and like the other thing that I do is called perception equals potential, um, 
but it's it's so it's a community thing, right? So you may work well on one aspect, right? Like work with the community or you you work with policy or something like that. You have to do all of those simultaneously. And that's what we, we've, when you look at most um, work, they either do programming and then forget about the policy. And the policy represents the system. Or they do all the policy and forget about the programming, which is what you're talking about. You know, do I change the laws? But what good is a change law if the family system is broke down, right? Mm. So it's not about it's not about doing one or the other. It's about a holistic approach, right? Okay. So while you're while you're working on the policy, which is uh, a macro thing, it's a big thing, mm. which rarely in a uh, uh, impacts the, the the community, then you that's going to help inform the policy and help make change while the policy, while you're working against the system. Um, it, it's almost like, uh, you know, us being at the back of the bus, right? right. So when, even though we go up and we say we want equal rights and we, you know, we do, we, we want to be able to ride at the back of the front of the bus, while you're boycotting the bus, you still got to get to work. So what it took was everybody coming together, making rides for everybody to still get to work, right? So then you could take away that power, but you also empower it at the same time. So it's the same thing. It's, it's yeah, the system needs to be shut down and fixed. The family needs to be shut down and fixed. So we have to partner, do a community thing, find the people and connect that can empower the policy, that can empower the community, that can help parents understand, you know, look, man, we're not here to try to tell you what you're doing wrong because I understand you fighting what you got to fight to survive. I'm just here. I ain't come here to tell you nothing. I just came to support you. Mm. And people tend to listen more when you support. I, 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 really, I really don't care what you chose to do. I, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? And then... It, but if I support you and make a change and help you see, like help, help I have a better life, you can make more solid and 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 solid decisions, right? right. But if 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 you you can't do one or the other, it has to be everything. It is a system problem. It is a community problem. It is a family problem. It's also you know understanding that we have to put things in place that again, support everything, right. so. So to work on these things collectively, yeah. Yeah. Not separately, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it. no one part is better than, or more, more important than or less valuable than the other, right? right? Right. So I have to be able to see what you bring, I have to see what you bring is valuable, right? My, my answer is not the only answer. And you got you got what I need. That's really what we're struggling with right nowadays. I mean, when you think about our society, it's a me society right now, oh. right? Everybody want to be seen. Everybody want to be the number one. It's no all of that. Nah, it's big enough for everybody, man. It is. It is. Now let's talk about the school to prison pipeline. Uh, okay. Theory. Now. Some may say this is a theory. Some may say, no, this is actual. Um, do you think this is done on purpose with the intent of leading students, well, not all students, disadvantaged students to prison? Or uh, this, isn't, this isn't the intent. Uh, the intent, this is just a result of the system. No, um, it's, in, it's, it's an intent. So um, education, so we have to go back with history. You know, history shows you where you're headed. And the intent for education was not, education was not built for working class, right? It was not the intent of education. It's almost, it's the same thing as with psychology. You know, 
the things that we use with psychology, um, they were tried and true and built for middle class white or Anglo-Saxon and higher, right? So that's what it, so none of that has anything to do with those below a certain socioeconomic level. Education system was not for that any either. So it was built for, education was really to create um, uh, manage, middle manage, management and higher, right? So that was not included for our kids because we weren't written into that. So yes, the system is built to, uh, keep black I, I don't even I, I'm not I ain't got, I'm not paid by nobody that I gotta worry about what I say so yeah um it wasn't built for black folks right it was not built to uh empower um middle class people it was for something separate so yes the system is built to do that um the school to prison pipeline is not a, a, a an idea it is actually um, policies and practices in place that identify um, square pegs that don't fit into the round hole, right? So again, education is one thing, um, indoctrination is have is if you can answer this certain question, square round hole, mm. and you can get that right, then you can pass through and go to the next block, right? Well, if you can't answer these questions, you don't even fit through. So how I, I, you taking up time and space, I gotta sweep you to the side. That's what this is. That's what we're talking about. So when you have a system that is tied to financial, not supports, but the rewards, right? So we're rewarding, uh people for passing tests right and creating tests and the test amplify um a certain thought process a certain style of learning that kind of thing all of that is built to just reinforce we need you to do a certain thing if you don't fit that then we sweep you to the side and that the, when they sweep you to the side that's the prison mm -hmm. i mean yeah yeah it's not a it is it's a real thing. It is not, the education system was not built for black students. Um, so, and we know that the prison industrial complex um, was just, is something that was, that came from how our system was built back in the day. Um, you know, they, they try to keep slaves or former slaves um, incarcerated because the law stated that if you were incarcerated, then you were back to being free labor. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah there, you know, were, there were policies in place, even after slavery, uh, um, if they didn't have a job. Black code. <laughs> they they yeah. go to jail. It's like, wow. Yeah. yeah, just loitering. I mean, just waiting around to try to find a job. Right. And they would go, this was, these were, 14 year old kids, eight year old kids, because back then it was, you know, they didn't have child labor laws. So it right. was, and, and child labor was not even built. Child labor laws were not inclusive of uh, African-American youth. Right. right. It was, I mean, we're talking Irish and we're talking um, uh, our- the Polish. Uh, yeah, all of that. It, it, none of that had anything, anything, any numbers or data that people pull and they show when it's uh, not se uh, separated by race or, or ethnicity. Um, it's always, it, it's never inclusive of black populations. It was always two to three times worse for us when they, when the, what data that they're showing. It's never talked included our uh, contribution to that data. Yeah, I mean, one of my issues uh, with the school system has been that they don't take the time to learn how each student learns and have a particular class or teacher that focuses on the way those students learn opposed to how these students learn. And uh, I, I'll give you an example. When I was in high school, man, I used to I used to clown a lot, and I, even though I was a basketball player, 
man, I, I used to fail. I used to flunk out. And uh, sometimes I just I flunk out after doing just enough until after basketball season. And then I, I clown again, right? And so I didn't do any homework, uh, some class work. And a lot, you know, that was a result of my, my home life was dysfunctional. But there were some guys who I saw and, and, and girls making high Bs, high A's. And I always thought to myself, man, I'm smarter than them. So we fast forward and we got to take this test, the standardized state test, right? It was three, three courses, uh, three subjects. I think it was the TOS test. Man, I mastered all three. And these people who were making straight A's flunked. They, 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 didn't, they didn't pass them. <laughs> and uh, I, even back then, I was like, man, this is, this is weird. How are they making straight A's? But they can't pass the, these tests. And uh, what, what, what is that all about? Man, you know, I, I, I had a similar experience. And, and this is against no one. Um, I, in my master's program in social work. And these, these kids, I was the oldest person in there. And these kids are, are studying to answer the tests, right? You, you're studying to get the answers. And it used to upset me that, you know, they were so proud of that. But when you come to learn a concept, like they didn't know the concept, right? So what good is it for you to, to know the answer that's going to be on the test, but you don't understand the concept that we're trying to get across? Right. If you want to understand the concept, you can take that in anything. That, that, that spans any type of learning, right, is the concept. So right. I think that's what you're speaking of, right? So if right. you understand the concept, then you can do the test. If they all they know is the answer, right? Right. You don't know anything, right? Because if you the don't test, know if how the is not relevant, yeah, yeah, if you don't, there it is. You don't know the thing, and that's what it is. No, and everybody does not learn the same way. Everyone does not comprehend or take in information the same way. Like I have to, even now in my job, I can't, you can't just send me something and tell me, okay, this is, I get lost. But if you show it to me and work and let me do that, I, I'm good with that. But again, we're talking about incentivized uh, regurgitation. So wh what, what is, what incentives do schools have financially to change how they do things when their budget is based on if you're an A school, if you're a if you're a Title One school, your budget goes to this, and it's and you get paid for kids failing. Wow. What is? I mean, what? Why are you incentivized to make changes? That no, no, man, this is not built for. We not we don't have an education system. Right. We have you know you you are indoctrinated into into something that has nothing to do with your education um, or your, your, your ideals or idea of what is valuable to you. Right. So that's what we're facing. Yeah, and, and even today, up until today, like, I don't like the classroom. <laughs> so I'm in IT and I'm telling you, I rose through the ranks by self-studying it, by getting a book from Barnes and Noble and I'll study by myself but I don't know if it's a phobia or just a distaste for the classroom environment, but that's, that's just what it is. And, and I'm like, like, how do you deal with a kid like me? Like, man, that kid could be on the path to prison if they don't just accept themselves for who they are and say, you know what? That system doesn't work for me. I need to be alone to study. I mean, unfortunately, I understood that, but uh, I'm not the only one out there like that. So, yeah, that that uh, that always bothered me with the system. It's, it's, yeah, man. But, you know, it is again, we're talking we're talking incentives. We're talking uh, like the financial aspect, the political aspect of it. When you're talking about. Where are you going to get the money? Where are you going to get this? Where's the budget gonna be done? Where are you gonna spend the money? All of those things, 
we have the funding there necessary to do what needs to be done. But are you going to be willing enough to lose the power that comes with the money, right? And the power that comes with being the boss, because you're talking about having an open mind. You're talking about having an open enough concept, cultural competence. You're talking about all those things that I have to be as an educator, as a leader, I have to be confident in who I am. My job does not dictate who I am. You know, I, I, I don't like, I drive a piece of junk car and all of these things and you know, but it's paid for. I don't pay no extra stuff. I don't do this, but I get to do that because I was, it, what was instilled in me was that I was somebody. And when I, even when I lost that throughout how I was living my life, I always felt about myself that I was, it didn't matter who, what I had or didn't have, I'm something, right. man. And I know the value of me and that's what I'm, what I'm speaking of. It's not just fixing the kids in the school to prison pipeline. It's empowering the teachers. Yes. We got, we got hurt and broke, broken people trying to teach broken kids how to be whole you can't you can't do that we got a broken leadership that's trying to say okay do this and fall in line hit if you're not fitting in that round hole bro we ain't got time for that number one we don't we're not getting paid to care number two we don't have time for that because we've got all of this because if we send our money somewhere else we're going to lose the support we're going to do this we're not going to get that it, it, Again, the school to prison pipeline is not a, a, an idea. It's not a it's not a, a thought process. It is an actual um, incentivized, financially incentivized um, process that is working, and it begins with changing how we do education. And and again, like I say, we're not educating. We're assimilating kids into what we need them to be. I mean, when you think about how much it, how much we get paid for folks going to jail, what it costs the daily, it costs, that's, I think it's almost three to four times as much you get paid for a prison than you do for, you know, that. So why, hey, if you, if you fail, I'm still getting paid on both ends. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I was looking, uh, doing some, doing some studying today, um, in the U S I believe it said, uh, Per per one per hundred thousand people, every hundred thousand pe people, eight hundred are incarcerated. I believe that was the yeah. I believe that, and and we're the highest amongst all yeah. the countries. Uh, second is Russia. Uh, Europe is very low. Uh, Japan is 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 low. I was like, man, this is this is big business. Uh, it's <laughs> big business. Yeah, yeah. This is intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it is literally, again, you know, we, we say free market and we mean it in a, in a certain way. Um, we're talking about, you know, educated education. But again, like I said, it's not education, it's a simulation. And a simulation has no space for um, what I like to call being a problem. You know, because back in the 60s, 50s and 60s, actually back in the in the it started back then, you know, it was called it was the black problem. Mm. Right. And they used to in the 60s and 70s, they 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s said it outright because they still had the they still had the right to say that by law. You know, it was how do we fix this black problem, right? The problem of, of black liberation and all of that. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. We're a problem, man. You have a kid, we have kids that we consider a problem. And let me not let me not take responsibility for the system that I created that causes all of that. It even if you, you know, the system only applies to, to upper class white, the dominant culture, right? That's what the system is created to uh, to assist and help. So if they're having a problem, you know, and this kid is not, he's been, you know, again, you go back to the killers and the mass shooters, 
oh, he was disturbed and all of that. But, you know, all of those things. But when my kid, when Pookie got a problem and Pookie Mama worked two jobs, he lived in a dope hole because can't nobody get this. And, you know, people trying to survive and everybody, they people getting shot, people getting this, that and the other. Why, why we can't make no exceptions for Pookie? Right, right, and then, right. it, 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 yeah, I made him. I may have made it out, but that's my makeup, right? Right. This person next to me may can go through the same thing, and can't and fall apart. We got teachers that fall apart because a kid talks back to them. But if a kid have mama got arrested, ain't got no food, this, that, and the other, come to the class. And you trying to tell me something that's not relevant to how I'm going to eat, how I'm going to live, how all of this, and you get pissed off because I say something back to you, but I show up to school every day. And you fall apart because I tell you to shut up. So who's the weak, broken person? You're a grown teacher with a job and, and benefits that can't handle somebody talking back to you. Yeah, no. you know, that's that's ego. That's that's it's ego and um, insecurity. Um, but then we got to go back and, and say, who who are these educators? Who are these teachers? A lot of these teachers are just taking it, you know, for the money, and they really don't have a passion for kids and and teaching kids. Um, so, yeah, I, I just don't know. How do we fix that? Like, how do we fix that issue? And uh, you know, I used to think, too. yes. And I used to think I, I would normally say something, you know, but I don't think that anybody goes into the teacher under that doesn't have the majority of people. I should say a, a, the, a lot of people go into teaching because they want to help someone, right? But again, we're talking about destination known, right? And then understanding yourself, figuring out. But nobody tells them about the, the, the things that go along with teaching, right? So if I'm teaching to the perfect kid with the ability to learn, that's great. But if I got a kid, nobody's telling me that I got to go put up with, with stuff that I have no reference for, no this, no support no support from the system that I'm supposed to be working in that's supposed to be there. You didn't tell me that. So how am I supposed to teach at with efficiency, right. right? You don't prepare me. You don't spend the money on the supports for the kids. You know that these kids come from this. All of this is data driven. So, that, you know, I, I used to beat up, I used, I still say a bad teacher is a bad teacher. Now, I'm not giving no breaks about that, right? right. right? Yeah, but we do need to empower, again, is the change in the system, our kids' system. And ecosystems affect every aspect of that. I mean, like, if you change, if you take all the predators away, then the, the prey or eats everything because there's nothing to keep it in check, right? So every little thing affects. It's the same thing. You got teachers not doing this, they, but they need support. You don't have education. It goes back to what you were stating that, you know, how do we fix this? It's not just, a, it's not just help, you know, do the teachers want to teach? I'm quite sure they wanted to teach, but you didn't prepare me for what I'm getting ready to come up. You sending me somewhere that I have no reference for. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're not, not even part of the community. And, uh, yeah, 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 that's that's something, man. That, that's that's something, um, just like the policing, uh, not there part of the go. community. You're policing a community you're not a part of. You don't understand the culture, the people. Uh, yeah, and, and it's the same thing with teachers. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's dangerous. Now- That's very dangerous. Yes, very, very. It, it's dangerous even as a black man going into the white community, if I don't have a rapport or understanding of that culture, you know, or, or, or you know, what, whatever, mobile home community, uh, or, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah, if I don't understand that culture, yeah, it's, it's, it could be rough. Uh, now, yeah. with Desti Destination Known, can you explain to the people what Destination Known is and the different programs and, and, and what the purpose of it is, the mission? 
Yes. Yeah, so the mission of Destination Known is to change, is to make Black students uh, viable, globally viable assets, right? Because again, it's a community. Um, and we have to teach kids, number one, that they're valued, that their thoughts and ideas are valued. We have to show them that what they believe about themselves is possible, right? They have opportunities. Um, and then the last thing is that they are, they have valuable input into the community. So we, we just want to make black, specifically black youth, um, globally viable, right? Um, change how they, uh, view themselves. And when you change that, you change your world. So if you change how you see yourself, you change the world. Um, destination known, the program itself is um, actually student engagement. It helps kids recognize, again, like I said, it started off, what is it, what you, what you dream about is possible. What you need is a plan and you need some understanding and a backup plan, recognize, like, like we said about teachers, this is the situation you're going into, you may run into this and equipping them to overcome those hurdles. Um, We've got uh, we've got engaging breakthroughs, which is about helping. Uh, I think my brother Craig was on here with you yes. last week. Yes. Um, but engaging breakthroughs, which is about emotional intelligence, working on the. So we work with he works with um, the teachers and the the adult on the adult side. We've got your program, uh, IT management for project management for youth. Um, which I just believe is a part of discipline because you have to know how to work with people. You have to understand how you fit into a project. You can you don't have to do this person's part. Let them do their part. We have that. We've got, we are her, um, which is about female uh, empowerment. Um, we've got uh, the unfamiliar place, which is uh, mental health, um, first aid and mental health education for youth. We've got uh, m and series, which is mindfulness and meditation. Um, that's a proven SEL uh, support. Um, we've got Jasmine with her program, who's, she's, she's a doctor. She's getting her doctorate, I should say. She's thinking about opening her, she's not thinking about, she's actually making steps to open her own school come 2023. Um, what else do we have, bro? We've got um, Demetrius and Dakir. Right. So we've got physical, uh, know yourself, fitness, and mentoring. Um, we they we do mentoring from a physical aspect. We've tr we provided. Did I miss anybody? I don't, I don't think believe I so. Um, yeah, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, There's several programs. Seven, yeah. Seven, yeah. Seven, we've yeah. got we got we've got several programs. It's a complete um, social emotional learning uh, uh, curriculum that works specifically with uh, to change the ecosystem that our kids are involved in, right? Again, we try to take a holistic approach, not just what do I need to do to fix the kid, like the kid's broken. Right. Not just, we, that's why we partner with what I do in, the, in my day job, Perception Equals Potential with uh, Texas Criminal Justice Coalition. Because we have to do the political aspect and the and the uh, the policy aspect, um, we have to work with the teachers. We have to work with the youth. We have to work with the parents. Um, we have to change the entire ecosystem simultaneously, or we have a system that's out of whack. And you know that that's it, it's going to a system. You know, systems theory always says that you seek an equilibrium. So. Um, Everybody's, we have to do it all simultaneously. That's what Destination Known was created for. That's why I pulled the people in. Um, that's why we partner with the people that we need to partner with because understanding that it's not just fixing one thing. It has to be a holistic approach. Um, we provide the social emotional learning support um, and we do a damn good job of it, man. We, we held a program um, youth empowerment camp I, on the call we were on just got off of right. there's an opportunity to do some more um, we're good at what we do we're, we're good at what we do but you can't you can't make people take what they're not ready to accept so 
Um, but yeah, destinationknown.org. Um, it, it explains everything. Um, we, we, we have a newsletter coming out. Uh, our first newsletter will be uh, in at the end of this month. Um, we're planning for a health fair in probably January, um, bringing another uh, student um, empowerment camp, focusing on more, bringing more focus to uh, what it means to help with the parents. So we've got a lot of things coming up, um, a lot of partnerships in place, um, but we do a great job of what we do. All right, I agree. Now, how can the community help out? Because this is a community problem yes. and it's gonna take a, a community uh, giving a solution, resolving it. Yes, um, the community can, can join on board. So what they can do is find out, if you reach out to us and you know that there's an issue, it doesn't always take a uh, hundred people to get something done. Right. Every one person that reaches out, um, if you have a problem, if you have an issue, if you need to talk about something, um, that's the way the community can come and be involved. Reach out to us. You know that you have an issue. What can we advocate for change for you, right? If it's 15 people, we'll take 15. If it's one, let's build from there because pro the problems that we're facing, you're not alone. Right. Again, we go back to what you're facing. Somebody else is facing. Right. And if you understand that, I think if the community would uh, start exposing what's really bothering them, what's really going on in the community, knowing that um, we come from the community, that we're involved in the community, that we are for the community, then I think that's what it would do. So when we host these when we host things, show up. There's other organizations. Find out what's in your area, what's affecting your kids in your area, and find that organizations because we're not the only organization out here doing great work, right? There's plenty of people that are out. It's about finding out. It's about recognizing what's wrong and what's going on with you. It doesn't have to be wrong. It's what issues are you are keeping you from being the whole person or a whole community that you want to be. And everybody in your community is valuable. Everybody in your community is valid. And you have to be whole enough within yourself to be able to recognize what's good and what and, and, and the good in other people. So I think that's what communities can start doing. Um, recognizing that every part of their community brings some, some valid, or, or, or valuable piece to the community. I mean, either you're gonna do that or we're can, gonna continue making uh, criminals, right? Because right. we're creating the criminals. Right. You don't provide somebody with what they, what they need, they're gonna get it some way, oh, yeah. so. They will survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's one thing about life, man, people will survive. Right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah. uh, how can, uh, can, can people donate? to the cause yes if you if you go to our site um we can you can donate um it's uh donations at destinationknown.org again the website is destinationknown.org uh and there's a donate there button there you can get in contact with me um through info at destinationknown.org or you can reach out to me at uh l theodore at Texas CJC.org. That's T E X A S C J C dot org. Um, either way, um, you can get in touch with me and we can have a conversation uh, about what you'd like to implement. But as far as destination known is, if you go to our website, info or you can hit us up on info at destination known.org, uh, we can I can set you in the right place or you can find us uh, at the website and donate from there. Good deal, good deal. Well, brother, I yes, won't sir. hold you. I really enjoyed this, man. I, I Thank you for- Yes, sir. Thank you, time, man. Yeah, setting aside some time for me. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you too, man. You know, I, I told you this once before, bro. I always, since I met you, I looked up to you, man. Oh, wow. It's always a, 
that that power of blackness that 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 rests within you that I I, I never thought I had. So wow. I but appreciate you how you how you show up in this world, man. Man, hey, I'm humble. It's all Bless love, brother. You, love man. you. Yes, I'll sir. See, I'll, love I'll you see too, you next man. week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All, All right. right Thank you, brother. You have a good one.